Hey guys and welcome back to Sherlock Holmes chapter 1. So we just solved our first case. We found the cane and we returned it to its rightful owner. A noble Englishman who uses it to beat up people. But apparently the guy keeps losing stuff because he went to see a medium and he claims the medium stole his diamond. And now it's our job to try to find it. Let's see if we can. Okay, so let's go back to the medium room and talk to the medium. Okay, so we can use our instinct and we can uh, find people we can talk to who's friendly and who's who. That's good. All right, there's a file here. Dark rituals at the graveyard. And so right after I turned the corner, I saw him, the necromancer. He started to nervously look around, but I quickly hid behind a gravestone. Common sense told me to run, but my duty to you, my readers, was more important than the risk to my own life. Wow, that's a brave reporter. Luckily, the vampire did not notice me and continued his devilish ritual. He raised a woman from her grave and ordered her to kill two men who were close by. Then when, then they kissed and made unholy love in her freshly unearthed coffin. It lasted for hours, but when the moon became low in the sky, they turned into bats and flew away. I managed to obtain a few photographs of the victims. Unfortunately, these were confiscated by the police. Interesting. So, there might be vampires here. <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that's kind of funny. Let's see what you guys know. Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. You don't know anything. Maybe you know something. What happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose this can wait. Yeah. Why are you asking about spirits now? I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him? Please? So there's John. There's a lady, barely conscious. I wonder if she could have done it. So he's friendly and disoriented, so maybe it wasn't him. Let's see. There's something behind this cloth. It looks like a mirror. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's more likely. Interesting. So this is a scam. It's a scam. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. Why do you keep calling me Sherry? I don't get it. Find the stone, Mr. Holmes, and quickly. All right. Oh, 
The diamond was placed on the table so that all participants could reach it. Okay. 104 karat diamond, wow. 1.3 inch diameter. <laughs> That's pretty huge. Okay, so that's the only thing I could interact with. Now there's some other stuff. There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. So that's probably a lady's wine glass. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Ectoplasm? The ghost was here, Sherry. Right. The ghost was here. Okay, so there's one more clue. Jacket, maybe, no. The diamond we inspected. Something here? There's one more clue that I'm missing. What could it be? Do you guys see it? Okay, maybe it's not on the table. Maybe it's somewhere else in the room. Let's see. This reminds me so much of Instinct and the Hitman. I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. So the servants are also friendly. Oh, there's something on the floor here. Okay, so no, there's one more clue here somewhere. on the floor. Where is it? What am I not seeing? Oh, there it is. Butterfly. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charms. Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind palace, Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. All right. It's time to make our first deduction. That wasn't a butter butterfly, that was a moth. Let's, let's see. The lady pointed across the table and screamed. Let's see why she could have done that. When he discovered Lord Craven punched the medium. That's probably not it. During the seance, Lady Craven's place at the table was opposite a window to the courtyard. So she probably saw something in the window. Lady Craven was pointing at the window. I'm sure she saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. Maybe we have somebody we need to talk to outside. Let's 
Mr. The Moth Pin. Luca owns a pin in the shape of a moth. When he discovered that the diamond had been stolen, Lord Craven punched the medium in the face. I don't think these two go together. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. All right, so let's go take a look. Can we look out the window? What do we see? That's the only window, right? Okay, can we get out this way? Looks like the a heel of a shoe, maybe. This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. So let's pin the shoe. trail there is a trail Okay, so apparently he went this way. <sighs> Looks like they changed. Let's take a look. Size four with a broken heel. Yep, that's the shoe. Rose de Moor. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. So, definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless... Oh, no, what a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. All right. May I ask you something? I would never refuse a nobleman, but I know nothing, sir. Excuse me, just one question. Hmm. You look like an honorable man. I have some information for you. So the staff said that Lucia got a scolding from the chief steward for wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs now. Okay, let's go find Lucia. Thank you for your help. Okay, 
I don't think that's her. Is this her? Shoe size four. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? My daughter was solving, solving a crime. Or maybe I'm a writer, like the guy in the newspaper. Let's, let's lie. I'm a novelist documenting the supernatural and those who witness it. Now, should you take a starring role in the tale, I will need your name. Oh my, a book? And you want to include me? I'm Lucia, Lucia Saleta. Something went wrong during the seance, Lucia, but no one will tell me what happened. You would be a valuable interview if you were there. I was, and I saw everything with my own eyes. Describe what happened during the seance. Um, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest. A glowing cloud or a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did she? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape, and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? <laughs> the, the medium, Mr. Galici. He was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. <laughs> and then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right, I have your account memorized. Good day. You lied to the poor girl, Sherry. What a tease. She'll dream about being a character of that book. Surely a pleasant dream is better than no dream at all, John. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. So it looks like the medium was involved. See, John's not anywhere around, but he always shows up. Maybe he's a ghost. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. All right. Hit him with a chair. Okay, no. So I have to construct this, okay. No, you were sitting across the window. Sorry, you are sitting across the window, so... There we go. And here was the medium. And 
here was the guy, Lord Craven. No. There we go. Pretty sure this is what it looked like. The lady was across the window. Yeah, let's validate. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? I think the lady fainted while she was ho holding the diamond, and she still has it. Room 226. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall. Did I do that wrong? Lady Craven is not who she... Oh, well, that definitely is suspicious. No. Okay, let's give it one more try. Keep talking, ladies. Lady Craven is not who she seems. The chef steals food. Yeah, I don't care about that. I was on the lookout. That's suspicious. Price is rising again. Don't care. Lots of guests this summer. Don't care. Cannot use a fish knife. <laughs> All right. Lady Craven is not a... This is weird. Care. Okay, so we have to do this quickly. Let's try it. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember her babe? Was on the lookout, the chef steals food, don't care. Lots of guests this summer, don't care. Don't care. Prices don't care. I don't think that's made her husband drunk, yes. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Missing. Lady Craven is not as <gasps> 
So I overheard two staff members talking about Lady Craven. They gossiped that the woman may not be the wife of Lord Craven. By their observations, she was on the lookout during the evening while, while trying to get Lord Craven drunk. They also noticed that the lady was unsure how to properly use a fish knife. Okay, I guess a lady would know how to eat a fish. So to them, that was suspicious. Interesting. You're here, at last. I didn't do that. I swear, I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You, you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You were the only one who can find the truth. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look, after you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici, the medium. And was your mistress there too? Oh, so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225. But that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, I will have to visit reception myself then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. Where did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. Now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. Barely an hour has passed, and you already have yourself a murder mystery shot. All right, guys, so we have solved the diamond case. It was his mistress, after all. But now she's dead, and we have to try to solve her murder. And we will try to do that in the next episode. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And let me know what you think of the puzzles in this game in the comments.